The question is, could I give some explanation about how to um, attune to powers from previous incarnations? So what is the reason that certain qualities are not always available in, uh, in certain incarnations? Well, uh, in general, it is about the limitations of our consciousness. Um, and also the amount of... Um, uh, because the human consciousness tends to be very linear. We are not very good at doing 10 things at the same time with equal amount of attention and intensity. And because of our linear nature we have a limited amount of time and space available for manifestation. Uh, so ultimately because there, there are limited means we have to focus. If I want to be uh, a great lover, a great athlete, a great leader, a great follower, a great artist, um, then usually one life is not enough. And um, we tend to choose uh, to focus on certain aspects rather than to try to do everything at the same time. Uh, another reason can be um, that although we learned certain powers and talents in that life, we misbehaved horribly while using those talents and uh, those talents are blocked from us until we have uh, learned uh, from our past mistakes and we are not so likely to repeat our mistakes so that there is kind of a, a safety valve or a certain inner guardian which we have to, uh, to appease before we allow ourselves to, to access to those powers. Um, so, for instance, in my own personal experience, I used to block a lot of my own energetic talents, especially my magical talents, um, because I was very afraid of my own anger. I felt my own anger was un imperfectly transformed, and I would do things which are incorrect or not intended or evil, and by, if I had my magical powers as well, the effect would be compounded and I would actually lose my magical powers. So it was better not to use them than to lose them. <laughs> um, and that lasted until I gained enough transformation and light uh, so that I now feel more confident in uh, allowing myself to be angry uh, and trusting myself to be angry and without being blinded uh, by, my, by my anger and now I can allow myself to be more magical. Um, so this is one of the, just an example of an inner guardian, but there can also be outer guardians, and these outer guardians can be either our previous victims, who follow us around um, to prevent us from harming others, like we harmed them. Uh, it can be the lords of karma, or other uh, spiritual judges and their servants, who will keep certain powers from us. Uh, it can also be simple forgetfulness that we have a talent which we never have used or which was never called upon uh, in our lives and therefore remains uh, subconscious. Um, so one of the easiest ways to get in touch is in a way to do uh, regression therapy. But regression therapy also has that as a disadvantage that we can start to over-identify with powers from our past lives and thereby screw up our present life because we start reliving uh, things uh, we did before and reusing powers which are actually not uh, they're useful to our ego because we can it gives us power, it gives us the ability to do things but it is useless to our spirit because we already have those experiences so in my case uh, I've led several incarnations uh, as, a, as a shaman and in this life I don't work that much with, uh, with shamanism because it is not a path my spirit wants to follow, it is now just a power I can use or not use as I desire but I no longer study or really focus on shamanism. Indeed the powers which awaken from your past life, they can have a lot to do with indeed blockages and life goals. So one of the reasons also to, uh, uh, to block a certain talent um, is to, in a way, change your path. Um, so one person I know, 
Um, he had many lives as a Xatria, as a fighter, so he became very used to using power, using talent, using his uh, knowledge, using his skills. And then he chose a life in which he was very sickly and was not very smart and um, uh, for them, him this was very frustrating and he became very angry at his life and his incarnation because he could remember, he could feel that all these powers were there and he wanted them back but also his spirit said like no because I'm becoming too prideful I have no humility left, I don't know how to serve anyone anymore um, because the power becomes too domineering, it starts to dominate my consciousness and I need to prevent myself from falling into darkness. So, in a way, the ego and the spirit are in a very big struggle, in a very big fight, because the ego feels it's sick, it's weak, it's powerless, and it needs the power to survive. But its own spirit won't let him have that power. Um, so these can be very interesting and very deep uh, problems. But ultimately it is about um, development of the spirit. If the spirit is strong enough, is wise enough, it can eventually uh, grow into mastery. So it is able to use whatever powers are part of its being without being limited by them, without being chained or misled or, uh, by these powers, or uh, tricked or seduced by these powers. But yeah, becoming a master is much easier said than done. Are these qualities stored somewhere? They are. Um, and these powers are stored uh, in, the, in, in several places. They are part of your... If you're part of an egregore, you leave them behind in egregores, or copies of them behind in egregores. They're always part of, your, of the human collective consciousness or the collective consciousness of the other species, which you were part of. Uh, so those are places you can go to reconnect with them. Um, you can often the spirit also um, has um, all the powers which it had in its incarnations before it changed species. Um, so that part of the spirit does not always go into the body, but it uh, is usually connected to the body as the higher self, as the higher consciousness, which can also be accessed by, in a way, going back to the time before you were incarnated and that's also a place to, to find back all these uh, powers you developed in your incarnations. Um, the uh, higher consciousness uh, usually takes a subset into its incarnation and that subset is usually stored in uh, the upper legs and the pelvic area. Um, so spe specifically in the in the thigh bones, in the knees, uh, and a little bit also in the in the pelvic bones, um, there are a lot of patterns in way seeds for the powers which can reawaken in your uh, in your incarnation. So usually they are not complete powers, but they are more talents which can be awakened, so that the power can be redeveloped quickly. Um, this is usually because uh, how power was used in a previous life is not how it should be used or how it should be used again in your, in your current incarnation because every time, every culture, every incarnation can ask for a different use of that power and you don't want to in a way, over crystallize. Um, some people do have uh, these powers in a crystallized form rather than a, a transformed form. And this has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is, of course, that the power is instantly usable. So you don't have to learn, you don't have to reawaken. Um, the problem is that it is very much set. The power is there in a specific form to, do, to perform a specific purpose. And usually these crystallized powers, these crystallizations are created in uh, working together with gods or goddesses or egregores or other higher powers to create a very strong transformation on the earth. So people like Mozart, uh, Einstein, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, they had very crystallized structures. So in a way all they were creating was already there just waiting to burst forward rather than being purely developed as a, as a raw talent.
Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I, uh, I sent you a message regarding uh, your um, talk about the regression therapy. Um, okay. Is it also possible that you don't go back to a previous life, but y you try to go back, but then, because I found myself suddenly inside an animal, could it also be something else that during regression you don't go back to a previous life, but you go just inside an animal? Yes. Uh, yeah. Also, regressing into an animal. I did. I had some personal regressions where I went into a stone and a tree, and those were very um, nice experiences. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, it, it's often also part of the of the uh, of the focus. Why you, why do you go into a regression? Because you you tend to find what you're looking for. And the energy you have at the moment you, in a way, leave your, yeah, your, your boundaries of, the, of your current uh, incarnation is in a way pulls you towards that, those memories. Uh, so you can guide uh, by your intention or by meditation before the regression uh, what type of life you will experience. Uh, one of the things which can happen though is that you turn into some, run into some um, blockages uh, because if there are spirits still connected to a previous life or are there still big traumas which block you your normal access to those memories or to those lives those have to be uh, worked through first or transformed first before all the powers and memories can uh, can come back to you one more thing about regressing into uh, into an animal um, because often uh, one reason for us to, uh, uh, to contact power animals or to go back to an animal life um, is to, because an animal has a certain uh, uh, outlook on life, it has a certain repertoire, a certain reality filter on how to deal with things. And often if we get too confused by our thoughts, we start to overthink everything, like okay, what is the best thing to do? Uh, what is right, what is wrong, what is pure, what is impure. Um, we get into confusion and we get into a whole mental labyrinth. And um, our own animal nature, or going back to the animals, they give us a very pure and harmonious way of dealing with certain things. Um, so they are very much a guide to, uh, to harmonious interaction, both with yourself and with others.